<laughs> it's alive. alive! It's alive! It's alive! Patch up a couple battle scars. I think this thing will be good as new. Can't even tell. <laughs> 1546. 1586. Good job. <laughs> it's reading. Now that I have my chronograph back and I got that one problem fixed, my next one to tackle was my Savage 110 and 65 Creedmoor. Recently I noticed it really not performing good and the groups were very subpar. And check this out. I'm getting some crazy keyholing as well. So I came to the conclusion that my rifle needed a thorough cleaning. After taking my muzzle brake off, this is what I saw. This is 50 rounds of Hajdan 4350, and yeah, that's a lot of carbon buildup. So I got curious, and I wanted to see how much carbon buildup happens after 10 shots uh, with this load developed with Hajdan 4350 at 42.6 grains. Surprisingly, that's a lot of carbon buildup just within 10 shots. The weird thing is, is that my chamber is actually really clean. So I'm kind of curious why this is happening at the muzzle. If anybody else is having these same results, comment below, let me know. So for those that don't know, the crown of the rifle is a very important factor to keep clean, even if you have a muzzle brake on. It's best practice to actually go in there once in a while, check out what's going on, and clean up that carbon filing. But you gotta take caution when doing this. Any damages to the edges of the crown could really affect your accuracy. My preferred method as of right now is using an old bronze bore brush in Hoppy's number 9. It also uses the same threads as your primer pocket tool. I'm using the Lyman. Now after tons of elbow grease, I got it back in working order and went out to retest the rifle. Right when I thought I got my accuracy back, this happens. <laughs> Now, at this point, I'm feeling kind of hopeless. How did I go from getting groups like this to getting flyers and keyholing? I better check the throat erosion on this rifle. It's got roughly 1,600 rounds on it. Now, this little simple DIY tool is an idea that I got from James Pollard. It's a fireform piece of brass that I cut a slit into that is neck size only. You could also squeeze the neck a little bit with a pair of pliers. This was a suggestion from 243 Outdoors. Basically what it is, is a DIY case overall length gauge. We're going to take this DIY tool, insert it into your chamber with the bullet all the way out, close the bolt slowly, and then remove it and take a measurement. In my opinion, this tool gives a very accurate measurement to get your overall length max to your lands compared to the Hornady max case length gauge. And the reason why is because we're using fire form brass that's fired to your chamber. Using the Hornady bullet comparator, we're going to get a max case base to OGI measurement. After getting a reading, we're going to notate this number as a reference for future. So I zeroed it out to compare my old hand loads. One thing that's usually not mentioned about comparators is that the comparator actually does not measure the datum line or OGI compared to SAMI spec. This is just a number reference to go off of, that way you know for your rifle. Alright, let's see what we got on the original hand loads. Wow, that is showing 110 thousandths off the lands of my rifle originally. My load consisted of being 8 thousandths off the lands. And with this number, it's showing I had quite a bit of throat erosion. So I pulled the bullets and made some new hand loads. This time, going off the 
new comparator number, I went 8 thousandths off the lands, and you can see that this pushes the bullet quite a bit out. Using the DIY max case length tool, I use that to set up my seating die and get these roughly back to 8 thousandths off the lands. With this new overall length, it freed up some case capacity, so I decided to work up some ladder charges in 0.3 grain increments. Starting at 42.6 grains, I shot that group and then went down and charged 0.3 to 42.3, shot that, and then went up to 42.9. Also, the weather warmed up quite a bit, being 30 degrees warmer than my initial loads. So, this will be a good verification to make sure this is dialed in for the summertime. Forty-nine fifteen. Twenty-eight ninety-two. That's a good load. So here's the three shot groups that I shot, starting with forty-two point six grains. Then I dropped down to forty-two point zero, and this gave me a big standard deviation number. Then I got two in one hole and this was 42.3 grains, but the standard deviation numbers were pretty high still. And last but not least, 42.9, and this is the load I'm gonna stick with. Well folks, that's all I got for now. For those that have been following my channel and are wondering how my community lead bullet catch is doing, here's a little quick update. Yeah, using the bottom as a rifle. But let's see, we're collecting lead. Yeah, doing pretty good.